you're watching South Asia News Line and here the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 9th of October. PM Modi calls opposition Congress a responsible party, accuses Gandhi of engaging in politics of hate. Special flight carrying 67 Pakistanis evacuating Lebanon arrives in Karachi. And Lankan new government allows Chinese ship to dock in its vessels, India suspicious. Now for all the details. Reacting to Indian main opposition leader Rahul Gandhi's remark of going to election commission regarding Haryana poll's result, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday accused the party of engaging in politics of hatred and desperation to regain power. He claimed that the Congress is sowing seeds of hatred in people's minds every day. Coming heavily on Congress party, PM Modi said that the party has always followed the formula of divide and gain power and has repeatedly proved that it's an irresponsible party. PM Modi said that the party was neither interested in development nor in legacy, while the BJP is building a bright future by drawing inspiration from the past. The Congress in Haryana could not capitalize on the 10 years of anti-incumbency of the BJP government. The BJP won 48 out of 90 seats in the Haryana Assembly, while Congress managed to win 37 seats. Independents won three seats and Indian National Lokdal secured two seats. Flood hit victims returned to muddy homes on Tuesday as water from the floods in India's Bihar state receded. Tens of thousands were driven out of their homes after embankments of Kosi and Bagmati River were breached, causing flooding in several parts of Bihar. Overflowing rivers brought slit and mud from the roads to the houses of the people. Villagers were seen cleaning up their houses and sifting through their belongings in the open, with muddy water accumulated all around. Data from state officials showed around 1.8 million people in Bihar have been affected by the flooding. Bihar, which borders the Himalayan nation of Nepal, is India's most flood-prone state. More than 70% of its total geographical area is at risk of annual floods, which put lives at risk and lead to heavy financial losses. अतः बस दस दिन के बाद हमसे घर लौटे कहीं पूजा पढ़ के सामान सारा सामान सब पालम कुर्सी सारा गायब हो गया हुआ है रेसिंग रेसिंग सारा सारा सामान खराब हो गया हुआ है Reacting to Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's statement regarding protest, the former PM and PTI spokesperson said that the government is trying to divert attention from its failures. In a statement, the PTI spokesperson calling the government mandate thieves said. They only know how to issue statements, but they are actually busy fueling differences among provinces and oppressing citizens. He further said that every person in Pakistan is aware that the Nawaz-led government came to power through vote manipulation. He said that the nation is determined to save the future of Pakistan, pledging to stand firm against what PTI terms injustices. Khan's statement comes after Shehbaz Sharif, while addressing the federal cabinet, said that allegations were made against the government and there were attempts made to create chaos at a time when the Chinese premier was about to pay a bilateral visit to Pakistan. Calling the recent protests of Imran Khan's party replica of the 2014 sit-in by the party, Sharif said the repeat of a gory tale would not be permitted at any cost. Amid Israel-Iran tensions, a special flight carrying Pakistani nationals who were evacuated from Lebanon arrived in Karachi on Wednesday. The flight carried 67 Pakistani nationals repatriated from Lebanon who travelled to Dasmakas, Syria by road, before being airlifted to Pakistan. Four Pakistanis from Syria were also evacuated in the same flight. The security, transport and food arrangements were made by the Pakistan embassy in Lebanon and Syria to ensure an incident-free evacuation through Lebanon. The conflict in Lebanon has escalated dramatically in recent weeks as Israel has carried out a string of assassinations of top Hezbollah leaders and launched ground operations into southern Lebanon that expanded further this week. Israel's bombardment of Lebanon has killed more than 2,100 people, most of them in the last two weeks, and forced 1.2 million people from their homes. Taliban on Tuesday criticized countries, particularly neighboring ones, for their mistreatment of Afghan refugees and stated that the countries are mistreating Afghan citizens under various pretexts. 
Speaking at an event, Refugee Minister Khalil Rehman Haqqani added that Afghan refugees do not interfere in the internal affairs of any country and neighbouring countries should stop expelling Afghan refugees. Haqqani further emphasised that security has now been restored in Afghanistan and the country is ready to welcome investors in various sectors. He called on Afghan citizens, especially the youth living abroad, to return and contribute their skills to rebuilding the nation. Kabul fell to Taliban two years ago and since then it has been violating human rights, especially of women. A Chinese Navy selling ship has been allowed to dock in Sri Lanka despite a ban on foreign research vessels, which Colombo's new government said remained in force. Foreign Minister Vijita Hirat said China's Polang, a tall ship with 130 crew, was given permission to dock in Colombo because it was a training vessel and not a research craft. Regional power India is suspicious of China's presence in the Indian Ocean and its influence in Sri Lanka and the Maldives, which are strategically placed halfway along key east-west international shipping routes. Colombo's Navy said the Chinese crew would stay until Friday, visiting tourist attractions of the country as well as offering briefings to Sri Lankan sailors. Lankan government has said that the government's decision to allow the Chinese military training vessel to visit Sri Lanka falls within the framework of the country's diplomatic engagements. As Gujarat celebrates Vikas Saptaha, marking 23 years of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's policy-driven governance, the state has emerged as a leader in India's green energy revolution contributing significantly to the country's ambitious target of 500 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030. Take a look. As Gujarat celebrates Vikas Sapta, marking 23 years of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's policy-driven governance, the state has emerged as a leader in India's green energy revolution, contributing significantly to the country's ambitious target of 500 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030. From large-scale solar parks to electrification of its transport sector, including the introduction of electric buses across major cities, Gujarat has not only become a renewable energy hub, but has also charted a roadmap for the entire country. Thanks to PM Modi's far-sighted vision that integrated public-private partnerships, job creation, and sustainable growth. Gujarat Bharat ka wo rajya hai jisne Bharat mein sabse pehle apni solar power policy banayi thi. Pehle Gujarat mein policy bani iske baad hum national level par aage bade. Duniya mein jaisa abhi Bhupendra bhai ne bataya क्लाइमेट के लिए अलग से मिनिस्ट्री बनाने वालों में भी गुजरात बहुत आगे था। With rooftop solar initiatives making renewable energy accessible to common citizens, thousands of households and businesses in Gujarat are benefiting from solar panels installed on their rooftops. According to a report by the World Economic Forum. Gujarat has nearly two-thirds of all residential rooftop solar power in India, despite having just 5% of India's 1.4 billion population and 6% of its land mass. Gujarat had already introduced its own subsidy system called Surya in 2019. Gujarat's rooftop solar program, which was launched in 2010, has been an inspirational model for the nationwide 2024 PM Surya Ghar Bijli Yojana. Atul Shah, a resident of Ahmedabad, describes rooftop solar as a one-time investment, lifetime profit initiative. It not only lowers electricity bills, it is also a profitable venture as individuals can sell excess electricity generated from these solar panels. हमने जब लगवाए हैं सबसे पहले हमने लगवाए थे सोसाइटी में फिर आसपास वाले पड़ोसी को भी हमने किया कि उसका ये बेनिफिट है ये लगवाओ और इसके हिसाब से समाज सेवा भी हो सकती है आपका बिजली का बिल भी कम आएगा और आपको ये बेनिफिट रहेगा खाली एक बार साफ करके आपको अच्छा बेनिफिट आपको रहेगा तो आसपास के लोगों ने भी लगवाया उसके लिए सेंटर पैनल गुजरात हैज आल्सो पायनियर हाइब्रिड रिन्यूएबल प्रोजेक्ट्स 
combining solar and wind power for maximum efficiency. Gujarat contributes to nearly 12% of the total renewable energy capacity of India. It is the first state in the country to achieve 100% electrification. Gujarat's renewable energy model also aligns with sustainable development goals, reducing carbon emissions and demonstrating India's commitment to addressing climate change. अगर मैं बात करूं इस दुनिया का सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट मुद्दे तो ग्लोबल वार्मिंग और क्लाइमेट चेंज है और जो नेता हमको मिले हैं प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी जी उनका विज़न जो है बहुत क्लियर है 2070 में वो इंडिया को कार्बन न्यूट्रल करना चाहते हैं और इस पूरे उनके मिशन के अंदर रिन्यूअल एनर्जी जो है वो बहुत एक इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ले रहा है Industries in Gujarat too are reaping the benefits of this energy shift. The state's commitment to sustainability has made it an attractive destination for manufacturing units. As India looks towards achieving its ambitious renewable energy goals, Gujarat remains at the forefront of this transformation. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.